Shoulder, Legionnaires, Rikon here, and welcome back to Magicalism. We are here with Luna on this chilly afternoon spring day. We're sitting here by the fire, trying to warm ourselves, and, well, we are still a little injured, unfortunately. We have this vegetable pizza who's just been sitting here, slowly warming up, but in our hands we have a cast iron frying pan. We're going to use that to heat up that pizza so that we can have ourselves a proper eat. That'll be the plan, and so let's see if we can. We have spotted a zombie, however. It would seem that the dead are still roaming around in the neighborhood. Perhaps they smelt the smell of this sweet vegetable pizza. I think we are going to have to stop. Let's see. They're over to the southwest of us at the moment. Have they seen us? Yes, unfortunately they have. And so this one will no doubt make their way over towards us. Hmm. We have a cudgel in our backpack, and I think we are going to need to use that. Let's see if we can drop the frying pan just over by the fire for the time being, and we'll see if we can get that cudgel into our hands. It takes us a while to get that wielded, and my next question is whether or not we're going to be able to cast any spells with that in our hands. Let's see, Magic Missile. Can we fire you one-handed? No, we're going to have to have the cudgel on the ground for now. And I think we're still going to be able to pick that up relatively quickly. So, let's try again. Magic Missile. We've got a good amount of experience. To fail, it's only 28 now. Let's go ahead and look at firing this off. Ah, two more spaces away. We will go ahead and spend it. Stop casting. Yes, thank you, and we'll wait just a little bit longer. As it gets closer, I believe that's the square that we need, and yes, it is within range. Four damage. It's not much, but it is a start. We launch out towards it, and we lost concentration. <laughs> the chance to fail was relatively low, but somehow we still managed, and that's okay. We're going to go ahead and launch out. Once again, we gain some more experience, but we managed to fail the casting. Finally, we do have a missile fly off in the direction of our foe, and we're going to keep on doing just that. Just kind of rapid firing now. Our mana is at 1700 currently, so we should be able to fire a few of these off before this thing gets too close to us. Trying as we can to continue firing. Experience slowly going up bit by bit but at this stage I think we are going to do better to wield that cudgel so we bring that up and into our hands let's see if we can move away from this fiend we're actually just going to start running now getting over towards the side and there we go we've got you on the chair we're going to go for a quick one two and then I think we're going to start moving yet again getting on the other side of this one two okay we hear a wump I hope that wump was us we can't be certain though. Moving around to the side again. One, two, two good strikes there. And this zombie's actually stunned. Let's bring the cudgel down on its head. Again, and again. I think we've got it now. There we go, with one final strike. That is another creature dead. Another one of Luna's neighbors fallen, kind of hanging over this chair. They were wearing a baseball cap, a trench coat, and a skirt. I'm sure we might have known them at one time. Let's go ahead and, well, I think the best thing we can do is just move them and everything into the fire. As, yeah, gross as that is, I feel like that's going to be our best course of action. So, let's see. Yep, that is indeed a fire. Okay, move you in there, the corpse. Now, I imagine the smell is going to be rather uh, atrocious. And we don't want to be seen again if we can avoid that. Let's go start crouching because we will need to do that. We're going to grab this frying pan once again. And I think we are going to have to uh, put our cudgel away to be able to use it, I think. Oh, and there we go. We actually defrosted the food. Easy enough. And there we go. Vegetable pizzas. Okay hot wonderful let's go have a little bit of this and we'll see if we can get satisfied that would be 
rather nice and there we go we are satisfied and we still have one piece of the pizza left so we'll go ahead and pick that up put that into our backpack for now I'm not so worried about that zombie coming back to life considering it's burning it is badly burnt at the moment and no doubt it will be fully burnt by the time it could possibly reanimate yes let's just hope it doesn't I'm gonna stand back upright and as much as I do want to try and make our way over towards that tower, I still think it's going to be best for us to wait until night falls proper. It is the afternoon, getting on towards the evening, so darkness will arrive eventually. That darkness might be somewhat of a friend to us. For now, I think we are going to make our way back down to the basement. Sitting by that fire and looking at that old photo of her grandfather, perhaps there is something else to it dancing with the coat rack maybe us just trying to interact with it wasn't enough maybe there is something else that we need to do there and so with that we're going to head back downstairs and see if we can do just that something of course what that something is well i want to see if we can grab this see if we can move it out the way whether or not we can do this with a cudgel in our hand i'm not sure but Luna is not feeling comfortable having her hands entirely free. And so let's see if we can grab this thing. We grab the coat rack and let's dance. Okay, the coat rack's moved out the way, but there's still something else there, a magic door. Well, the coat rack has moved. Can we walk into the door now? Take a deep breath, Luna. It might be anticlimactic, nothing might happen. But this could also be the start of everything. Here we go. Three, two, one. Yes, step into the magic door. Oh, okay. You trigger a magic door. Your surroundings shift. Do they? We're just here still. And there's nothing there now. What just happened? Nothing, unfortunately. As far as it seems, maybe there is something different here. It all looks the same. Oh no. We can hear shuffling. Shuffling from above? It must be. It has to be. We can hear shuffling close by. What is going on, Luna? All the same books are in here. Yeah. And you know what? We're actually going to go ahead and pick up Duelist's Annual. I think I'd like to have that on us. And we could take some cooking books as well. We can always leave them here. This is home after all, even if it is a little bloodied. And nothing else? No. Not from what we can see. No one in the bathroom? Interesting. And what did we have left in here? Just multivitamins and some soap. Let's make make our way back up to the surface. <laughs> and we're going to do that carefully and quietly. Luna. There's a zombie down here. Whether it came down the stairs or not, we can't be sure. But it's here now in the basement with us. And it is aware of us as well. So we're going to go and back on up. That couch will slow the creature down if we can move across it. Ah, but it chooses to go around. Of course it does. And so let's try to make this as difficult as we can for it. There we go. On the table, it is going to be a lot slower. Fantastic. So as it stumbles over that table, we're going to take quite a few strikes here. Unfortunately, spraying blood all over the ground, no doubt. Yep, a good strike. We stunned the creature. Again, we managed to stun it. This is good. We can keep this up. We can keep it locked down. So far, so good. We miss. We strike again. It hasn't been able to strike us yet. It is still stunned. Shambling. Trying to make its way across this table towards us. Oh, and we've been grabbed. Okay. Not so good. Let's try again. A good swing. There we go. Decimate. We've killed ten now already in our first day yes that is another dead except this zombie they're naked 
They don't have any clothes on at all. This is a bruised corpse. Not the one from upstairs, I think. But what is the time of day? We can't be certain. Oh, no, look. Something did change. The metal wall here. The inscriptions. <gasps> oh, Luna. No. No. We know exactly who that is now. In the darkness, it was difficult to make out who that figure was stumbling towards her. It was a darkened shape running back as quickly as she can. Looking at the body. What remains of it in the darkness? Do we have a light? We do. We have a lighter. Can I just... No. We can't exactly light up in here, but using a little bit of that light to illuminate this body. This body is the body of her grandfather. What remained of him? And I think that is difficult to make out because the outsides are in. This is not a nice sight. Not in the slightest. We need to catch our breath. Let's wait. Take a moment here. Breathe. Maybe it's not him. But I think it's potentially clear. That magic door, it opened a gateway, a pathway into another room there. Something that her grandfather had hidden. Let's see exactly what awaits us inside. Because that's where the noise came from. We heard shuffling coming from that room. We attacked out in the darkness, thinking it was just an, another one of those creatures, and it is where it was. Let's see, what do we have here? Okay, some regular materials. A pair of leather sandals that we no doubt recognize. And on the shelf here, some interesting things. More than a little interesting. <sighs> okay. Let's see. What do we have here, Luna? We'll start off on this side. A soul binder's guide to necromancy. A paperback tome for the art of binding undead creatures' souls to dolls, along with emulating their healing factor. Dark indeed. And what of this? Crystallized mana. This can be reloaded into rechargeable mana crystals, but it can never be unloaded. Right now, I think this just looks like pretty crystals to us. Maybe slightly recognizable, something that we've read in our beginner's guide, but still a little bit beyond us at this stage. We have another book. Again, Soulbinder's Guide to Necromancy. I think it's clear what our grandfather was doing, what he was trying to study. And now I think there is a moment of horror or realization. Maybe this was him. All of this, the dead rising. But it wasn't just here. It was everywhere else. The larger region her grandfather's powerful, but surely he isn't that powerful to raise the dead everywhere. He was a distant individual, but he was still kind. This is... To do that on such a scale, it doesn't match his character, no. Maybe then he was trying to understand what was happening, and perhaps even trying to undo it. Maybe we can find those secrets within these books as well. We do have... One final item here on the shelves, a lesser mana potion. Probably quite similar to uh, what Luna would have thought was just a interesting and strange cocktail her grandfather used to drink. And it looks like we have more here as well. Liquid mercury. Okay, let's not drink that, but it does have a bung in it, so we'll try and place it into our pack. And here we have more than one thing. Ah, <laughs> a lighter. We'll definitely be taking that, a lesser mana potion, and 
small mana crystal. It can be recharged with that crystallized mana we found before. This is a small mana crystal specifically designed to be attached to wand tips. I see. All right, well, let's take it and some more crystallized mana. Okay. Candles? Yeah, a few of them. You know what? We're going to go ahead and pick them up as well. Zero wax. We can recharge the candles? Okay. And what do we have here? Name this gate. Okay. This is an arcane gateway of some kind. Home? Question mark? And here we have the robe that her grandfather was wearing when he stepped into that gateway. It seems he reappeared here. And I think that crystallizes it in Luna's mind. That individual that we saw in the other room, that was her grandfather. What was left of him. This is a loose-fitting outer garment with sleeves and a mysterious amount of well-hidden pockets. Quite the robe. It is poor fitting, as it was there to fit her grandfather, but perhaps we could get this to fit ourselves. We'll take it. And another book. Geospatial Systems. The Lie of Linearity. This book outlines in great detail how time and space are wibbly-wobbly and non-Euclidean. It also appears to have a dozen different coordinate systems that it uses nearly interchangeably, which makes it hard to follow. There's a lot of jargon, but with intense study, you can probably learn a thing or two about portals. Definitely something that her grandfather was studying before. And it looks like the only two things that survived this process. We are going to be leaving this gate behind. Not until we understand it much more. As our grandfather was a powerful wizard. Rather powerful, it would seem. Yet even for those with power, things can still go wrong. Well, there we go. We opened the gateway. And I think for now we will push that back to where it was. And look at that photo again in our pocket. And the remains that are here. What then do we do with these remains? We have to bury him. Burning him. But this body, it's... It's not nice. It's a simple way to put it. Yeah. All right. We need to do something. We don't want it coming back. Dismembering. Not clean work. Cleaner than smashing the body into pieces. Ah, we will need something to do it. Maybe we will have to just carry him out of here then. We won't be bringing him back. That book, flicking through it, it doesn't save people. No, it brings them back as something else. All right. He's going to be heavy. But we're going to have to try to carry him. Putting our cudgel into our backpack, we carry him back up the stairs to the backyard, to the fire, which I'm sure is still burning. That it is. Getting out of breath, we're going to be placing him into this growing fire. The remains of one already consumed by that fire. The same must be done here. Must be done. And so, to the fire 
we give you. Rest now, Mr. Crowley. I hope you find peace on the other side. For us, though, Luna, we need to prepare for a night. With shock and, I'm sure, a healthy amount of disbelief settling in, we need to be prepared. With windows smashed, the upstairs isn't safe, nor is it exactly welcoming with the blood all over the kitchen and dining room and even the lounge, although this is our blood. Let's take a moment again to catch our breath and take stock of what we have so far. These are the books. Let's sit down on the couch and just read for a moment. Flick through them. Looks like we can get our piercing weapons higher with this. Or rather, no higher than we've got at the moment. So that won't help us, unfortunately. But this might still have something to it. It has crafting recipes. We can make infusion bracelets, potions, and dolls. Voodoo dolls of a kind. I see. It doesn't seem to teach us spells so much, and it is outside of our grasp at the moment. It actually does require a bit of tailoring skill. It can bring our tailoring skill up to six, but we do need to have a skill of four to begin with. So we won't be using that yet. Geospatial systems, though. Let's see. It's like we've already looked at it. It did say it would take time, but... Ah, translocate self. Perhaps we can read and learn. Hmm, how long would it take? Hopefully, not too long. Let's try. We start studying as light starts to slowly slip with a slither of it left here nightfall is going to be on us sooner than we would like we need water fresh water clean water in any kind of disaster we're going to want to boil that water we have a kettle so that's a good start i think we're going to have a need of that so we'll grab up that kettle and we'll get what water we can and that water at this stage is going to be coming from the toilet. Yep. And it's frozen to beat. We're going to have to try and smash this. And I think we can. Let's see. We might just be able to grab it. Yes, we need to crush it up. With our waistcoat, I would rather us not use the waistcoat. I'd rather us use maybe the cudgel. I feel like that's probably a better option for us. Let's go ahead and take that for now and hopefully... It just wants us to crush it up with our waistcoat. <laughs> I have no idea why it wants to use the waistcoat. Maybe it's because the waistcoat has the best bashing potential out of anything we have. It really doesn't. It really doesn't. We can not really use this as a weapon, so I'm not sure why it wants to do that. And I think even if we do try to smash this, we'll probably just smash the toilet. So yeah, not great. We could always have a look at just dropping our waistcoat for now, because it does seem to be something of a problem. We do have a hammer in there, so maybe it was wanting to use the hammer. And that could be it, actually. Yeah, it could be. Waistcoat with five items. You know what? We're going to try. Okay, it worked, and I think we did use the hammer there. We managed to pick up a whole heap of frozen water, so yeah, we have it just as frozen water. Okay, nice. Ice. <laughs> and a lot of it at that. Well, I think we're going to be able to boil it. This is going to be a question of how we're going to store it, so let's have a look and see what we have in the kitchen to work with. We have a mesh colander. What we need is containers of some kind. We might have containers, but we also have noise outside. Let's see. What is in here? Bleach. We're going to go ahead and take that bleach, and we're going to try and pour it down the sink. Let's see. 
Yep. You are going to go... <laughs> just onto the ground for now, over there, and yep. We definitely have a shuffling happening outside. I really hope they don't smash through these windows. We're going to try and carefully move away. Ah, and unfortunately, that did not work out very well for us. As we now have a SWAT zombie in the window. Yep. This zombie was part of a specialist unit of law enforcement. It still wears a battered armor with the SWAT logo emblazoned on the front. Another local, and I'm sure we know them, even being a SWAT member. At this stage, I think fighting something that is as covered up as this one is, it's not going to work so well for us. We might be able to lure them outside. We've got what we wanted. We have our container. We're just going to have to move. As fighting you. You know what? It's bold. And it might be a little stupid. But there's still a chance that we can do damage to this one. Especially being stuck in that window. With a movement cost of 400. Unfortunately though. Yeah. It will be able to climb off eventually. I'm hoping onto the sink or onto the stove. So let's start moving for now. Running over towards here. We've got a zombie coming through as well. Okay, we need to be ready to run, Luna. As the glass breaks off and this thing comes towards us, we're going to take our first strike. It is going to be a lot slower. Okay. Whew, that is not good. So, using the cudgel in our hand, gripping it in the darkness of the kitchen, we lash out towards it. We hit twice, but we don't seem to have much, if any, of an effect against this creature. This is designed to take bludgeoning damage. Luna, it's bold, but we need to know when to run. And now is that time. Our kitchen might just be lost. And more than that, even. We start running out and away. Is the fire still going? No, nope, it looks like it's out. Just ash there now. The remains of our grandfather. Well, home. We're going to be back. But we need to get away for now. Thankfully, it is a clear night, and it most certainly is night. We're going to start walking now, cautiously as we can, in the direction of a large tower. Let's have a look at that map again. There we go. The tower our grandfather spent so much time inside. Let's hope that we can make it in there. Fast food sounds good as well. Right now? Right now we're in even more trouble than I could have thought. Laying down in the grass, barely visible, the corpse of a dog raises us back up. And that was a Rikon mistake. But it also works good for the story here, as a zombie dog has risen in front of us. A deformed, animated corpse of a canine a sinewy beast which can easily outpace its two-legged friends, and that includes us. Running right now is not an option. And looking around us, there are no bushes that we can take advantage of close by. There's one, but it's all the way back over by the house. We're going to have to stand our ground here and hope that our equipment holds up. It bit down into our leg and into our jeans which it has started to rip. We're going to lash out towards it, and we quickly strike it, finding our mark. But as our next attack comes through, the dog hits our arm. We manage to block some of the damage, lashing out again. We miss, but it misses too. Circling around it, we strike again. It knocks into our torso, but thankfully our equipment is protecting us for now. Again we strike, and unfortunately, from behind us, we can see something else approaching. Another dog. You've got to be kidding me. This is not a good sign. There's two of them now. That one a little bit more damaged, and it can't see us right now. 
but it can probably smell that something is amiss. Finally, we get a good strike on the one in front of us. It is starting to slow, but it is still dangerous. Dangerous indeed, as it hits out towards our left arm. Right now, just bruising us, and that's good. Another quick strike, another miss, and another miss. There we go. Come on, Luna. The other dog is getting closer. Another quick strike. No stuns yet. But finally, with one last strike, this dog is dead. Our arms, our legs are hurting. And this one is close. We can see it in the moonlight, sniffing at the air. We might be able to get away without it seeing us, but we're going to have to be careful. We're still going to have to be quick. And there's a strong chance it will be able to hear us. It is certainly tracking us as it stops close towards the corpse of its, uh, well, fellow canine. We see another individual stumbling out of a house in between two of them. It can't see our location, but no doubt it can smell us. All right, let's go ahead and start to slow down. We need to get our breath back. We're going to start making our way to the south. Unfortunately, it looks like the dog has our scent. We have a few options here. Running as fast as we can. And that's certainly an option, but I don't know if it's going to help us here. We did manage to take down that dog. There's a strong chance we could take down this one, but also take damage at the same time. We need to preserve what breath we have left. We're going to be standing our ground here. As the hound gets our scent, it begins to charge. We strike out as it bites our torso. Again, we strike. Oh, fantastic. A great hit. Sending it reeling backwards, we stun the creature for a second. Okay, we follow it up with another quick strike. It is stunned and it is weak. Come on. Oh. We actually managed to damage our cudgel there. It's slowly starting to break. As the dog leaps back in towards us, our jeans ripped further. <sighs> but we managed to kill it. Just in time for another neighbor to approach. With three quick strikes, we've done some damage. Stunned, we will continue our onslaught. Calling out in the night. We try to kill this thing before it kills us as something else approaches from the northwest. Another zombie, another neighbor. Come on. It collapses, its grip on us failing, its hands slowly receding. There is another close by, out of breath, and without the ability to shout or scream for help. Luna stands her ground, precisely striking this one in the leg, and going for the head. Unfortunately, it grabs us and bites down on our arm. Our arm is still protecting us. We follow up strike after strike before its claws rake down the hole in our jeans. Our leg is bleeding. But falling over the other dead, a final death. But we have a wound, a wound on our leg. We are bleeding. It is but a scratch, but it is still a scratch. I think until this thing stops bleeding, we're not going to want to try and smash these corpses. A telescoping umbrella and a professional camera. We might be able to make use of some of those things. We're going to take the laptop, the camera, the umbrella, sure. We'll put it all into our backpack for now. Taking a few steps away, we have another zombie close by. We're going to start sneaking now, seeing if that will help, and it doesn't seem to. This thing has our scent. Luckily, the SWAT officer hasn't managed to catch on to ours, more than likely still in our backyard somewhere, but we have another fight here. One that is injured again, so we strike out. Good, stunning the creature. Okay, it's weakening. We are becoming more adept with the weapon in our hands. Brutality. Striking again and again in a brutal fashion. Our left arm now starts to bleed. Without the bandages to fix them, it is going to slowly do more damage to us. But we hope it won't go any further than that. We need to move away. We are bleeding. And perhaps we'll have a chance here. This tower. 
There is a large fence protecting it. Ah, and I think this is just another home. A regular home at that. No, it looks like it could be part of this tower, in fact. It's difficult to know for sure. Let's jump this fence. Climbing over? No, it looks like the tower is here. Our left leg has finished bleeding. Our left arm is continuing to do so. The windows aren't open. Yeah, and we can't get sufficient leverage with our hammer. We're going to have to try somewhere else. Try around the front. Oh no. A child. But not a normal child, Luna. <sighs> it was, at a time, only a child. And little is different about it now, aside from the hungry look in its eyes. You'd be hard-pressed not to feel like you were killing an actual child by putting it down. Yes, those hungry eyes are searching throughout this backyard. We can't let it see us. We don't want to fight something like that. And so, let's start to move. Walking for now. Blood slowly trickling down our left arm. It sounds like there's another close by. And it's certainly looking like we don't have a lot of options here. There's no way in from this side, not without smashing a window. And that could bring all kinds of trouble down on top of us. So for now, it's back over the fence. Back over and away. For now, thankfully, we aren't bleeding anymore. And there are bodies still out here, twitching ever so slightly. And so Luna, let's make sure. With cudgel in hand, we bring it down on that first dog. And then there's the others out here in the field. They need the same treatment. And so, one after the other, these corpses are smashed to pieces. Little of use remaining. Perhaps one of these homes could be our next stop. We know there is at least one something here that was smashing and causing a ruckus in this house. Let's try and go around for now. We can use the garden. We're making next to no sound as we move carefully across here. The downspout could help. It would give us some elevation. Quiet. Definitely so. And it's 8 p.m. We're telling the time. And I'm not sure how we're telling the time. We don't have any timekeeping devices. Unless, of course, the professional camera has a time and date on it. We might be able to use that then. Quite possibly. Or the laptop computer. There's still a chance. It does actually have a charge. Yeah. We'll keep it away for now. That is something that we can use as a potential light source as well. A dull one at that. And a peculiar creature stalks the streets. Let's see. A zombie like any other. Except for the fact that its features and skull have been devastated. It's unclear what caused the damage, but between the scraps of flesh you can see that its face and brain are gone, though its ears are still intact. And so, I think there's almost a sinking feeling for Luna now. Destroying the brain, just like any other TV show or movie, that's not enough. She needs to do more than just that, to stop these things. It doesn't have a brain. How then is it functioning. Maybe it is magic. Or maybe there is another explanation. Right now though, we're going to have to stay quiet. For if it doesn't have eyes, it must be using its ears and its sense of smell. We'll move around cautiously as we can as another zombie walks close by. Let's see what it does. It's just roaming backwards and forwards for now. We're not hearing anything inside this home. We might be able to try for it. Start to move towards it. I'm worried that the water that we have... Oh! 
it has actually turned into normal water and I imagine it's just at the bottom of our pack right now yeah not sure how we're gonna make use of that well we do have the kettle in there as well so it could be in the kettle I'm doing air quotation marks there unfortunately this door is closed and we're not gonna be able to pry it easily so we still don't have a way into here can we make it up there then towards this tower not with that there unless we go across the road and that could be opening a whole different series of issues well on top of the house then that's our next move for now unless of course the back door could be unlocked let's try the glass doors there we go they left them open intentionally or not let's see what we can find in here a steak knife and some peanut butter frozen it is very cold in these homes we've got a mug a ceramic cup we'll take one just so that we have one and looking at this we do actually have some useful books under the hood that won't be so useful to us cars are still something that we will be avoiding there's just too much trauma there for us so instead let's go through and take what we can we don't know what will be useful those two though i think they might be we got ourselves a windbreaker and that's not a bad option for us we are wearing a hoodie at the moment but our hoodie is rather damaged let's quickly go and compare the two of them to see whether or not um, one might be better than the other and right now that windbreaker is looking pretty good the protection is better it's not going to be as warm but it's only a little bit less so yeah i think we're gonna to have to try and transfer some items there let's go ahead and wear this windbreaker putting that on it is going to be sharing the same layer as our hoodie so what we're going to do is we're going to unload the hoodie and i think most of that's going to go into our backpack now and that means that we can just drop that hoodie or alternatively cut it into small little pieces i think we might need that it'll give us a chance to um uh, i was gonna say a chance to create some basic bandages but we are gonna need a light source to be able to do that so for now let's just roll it up and put it back into our backpack oh dear from the north we hear wump yep there's definitely still something here we're close enough now that we can hear it properly we won't stop for now we will have a look at everything that's around here and there's a lot of stuff for us to go through pliers and all the rest yeah some rags even there we go now we're talking the pickled meats veggies it's all food that we're going to be able to use hard cheeses yogurt butter if we do need to eat just butter well it's there for us so i'm going to go through collect what we can from this and well we'll have a look over what we've been able to scavenge all right so we picked up a few more candles and we have another flashlight we don't really need to have two of them so we're probably just going to take the batteries from one we've also picked up some pliers and we've picked up a whole heap of foods as you can see most of them if not all of them are frozen so we're not going to be actually eating any of them yet i am wanting to throw back some of these sodas and well milk you know what it's probably going to be milk first because that's going to go off soon and that'll deal with our thirst before anything else first of all though let's go just grab the batteries from this one here we're going to unload that and we're going to drop that flashlight on the ground we won't be needing that anymore ah more cooking utensils more than i thought we do have some more frying pans here cast iron we do have some steel ones as well which interestingly enough aren't as good at bashing and it's probably because they don't weigh as much we have boiling quality here containing food cooking it's not a bad option for us the pot is the same thing as well we've got a food cooking quality of three if we can fit that into our backpack i think we'll be quite happy that's going to do everything we really need it to do we can do some hammering with that no i think for now just that cast iron pot will do and that probably means that we can drop the frying pan that we've been holding on to yeah that will do it's getting a little bit more dangerous 
at this stage because we do know that there is definitely something here. You know what? That noise is going to attract other things and maybe that's a good thing. Let's place that for now if we can. Moving around here. Can we make it into this? No. Locked up as well, huh? Over the fence for now then. And around if we can. Yeah, whatever's in there, I think it's going to be stuck in there. So let's see if we can just sneak around here. Quietly as we can. There we go. So far, so good. Towards the front of the tower then. With all this activity going on down there, hopefully it's going to be enough to distract them. We'll find out soon enough. So we round the corner, we can see... Well, a very large door in front of this tower and a dead zombie. Many dead zombies. A pile of bruised corpses. A crawler, a swimmer, a runner and a regular zombie. And just the piles of clothes that they've been using. Many of them. What could have done this? What's inside this tower? This is a lot of death. Body after body after body. And a shotgun. Motorcycle armor. What is inside? What can we hear? Sneaking as best as we can, we caught sight of something for just a moment. Oh God. And our question has been answered. A stone golem. The tower's protector. Okay, let's see what we're looking at here. A large humanoid golem made from stone. Its fists look similar to rockets. That doesn't sound good. Let's hope that this thing doesn't have range. It can see us. We're going to start running. Now... Two brainless zombies. We're going to stop running. <laughs> running almost headlong into two other dead creatures. Luna takes a second to collect herself. It's not coming towards us. The stone golem, that is. It did seem to aggressively stomp around inside the tower, but it wasn't coming for us. And I think the reason it wasn't coming for us is it's too large to fit through these windows. It can't get to us. What else could be inside this tower? A wide range of things. Yeah. And how fast is that? We can't be certain. From the west we hear mechanical whirring. Stone grinding against stone. This tower is not to be trifled with. Perhaps we're not ready for it yet. That golem, though, could be very useful. If we set that free on the town, that could be all of the dead here taken care of. However, it is a danger. We don't know how fast that thing is. We don't know. Would it give up just chasing us? Or would it continue to hunt us until it found us? I think it's a risk. It's most certainly a risk. But it's one that we might have to look at taking. Can the door be opened? It's locked. But you know what? I don't think that's stopped Luna before, and I don't think it's going to stop her now. With cudgel in hand, we start smashing towards the door. Looking through there, we can see a peacoat and a top hat. Two items of clothing our grandfather has been seen wearing before. Again, we continue to whack at this door. That's that. Now, do we take a step within? We take a peek within. Still not seeing much further than that. And again, a little bit further. But we're looking at a just blanket of darkness in front of us. Let's go activate that flashlight of ours. Ah, looks like there's a little bit more to this place then. Fine, another door. We can deal with that, can't we? Sure we can. Sure. And with it open, 
maybe we're okay, or maybe not. We are hearing footsteps from above, all across this place. Now, I think that burst of confidence that Luna felt smashing her way in here is diminishing somewhat. Let's close that behind us. We're actually going to go into our inventory here, to our flashlight, and we're going to give that a new favorite letter, because we're going to be flicking this thing on and off. Well, there are many seats here for a lot of people. Let's see if we can rush across towards those curtains and get them closed. We don't want anything outside seeing us. And let's also hope that that golem can't get to us here. There's only one way to find out, isn't there? Let's close. Close here. Close there. There. Okay. Oh, God! Oh, God! Okay. Well... No surprises there, I suppose. It could totally make its way out to us. As we spin away from the window, we are greeted by this golem. Perhaps it was our excitement again. Its arm slams into our torso as we're rocketed back towards the sink, completely out of breath and stunned. We have but a moment to get out of here, otherwise this thing is going to kill us. We need to start running. And I don't think going through the window is going to help us here. We move to the side, trying to dodge around the creature as we can. Thankfully, we are faster than it. And I think we need to get it out of here. Let's wait a moment or two. Turn that flashlight on. Come on, you big pile of stone. We're waiting, hoping that the creature will follow us. It's there. It's certainly there. And I think we might have just let it outside. A moment or two more. There we go. That's what we needed, and it is out now in the world. Let's hope that it will do some work for us. For now, though, we need to run to get away from this thing. Dodging between two of those brainless zombies, we're going to start to slow down to a walk as we hear an explosion. The two zombies dying rather quickly. Try and catch our breath if we can. Waiting, hearing more fighting, and feeling a great pain in our chest. I think we're gonna need some aspirin. You know what? This is a job for codeine. We're still hurting from cauterizing ourselves earlier, and now our torso is badly bruised. We could have broken a rib, potentially, if not got some severe bruising in there. And so for now, we have to walk away from that, from that thing. We heard footsteps above. The tower is still dangerous. What's more dangerous is trying to explore it in the state that we're currently in. Home. It might be safe now, but there was that SWAT zombie still there. And so we'll make our way towards it. But I think first, we are going to take that cudgel and try to put it back into our inventory. Back into the hiking backpack. It is just holding on there. This big hunk of wood. Quite severely damaged. Looking back towards our home. Things are quiet. Limping somewhat. And still aching in the chest. We'll make our way towards the home listening as we do, hoping to hear nothing, and for now we do. Silence, just hooting off in the distance. As we move towards our home, we'll continue to listen. We can see a zombie outside, just loitering around our kitchen. It can't see us, but it can probably smell us, so we need to get down into the basement as quickly as possible, hoping, uh, hoping that we're okay, but it would seem that isn't the case. It could have been the blood in the other room, but I think others have found their way in here and perhaps even smashed through that door. Right now we have a creature in front of us, although it is very damaged. With our hands free, we might be able to blast it with a spell. 
And so let's try. We reach out our hand, casting magic missile. And we reach out towards it. We strike, doing damage. Not enough to kill it. We'll try yet again. There we go. Come on, just a little more. There we go. The magic, extending from our fingers, kills this thing. Looking outside of our window, we can see one of the neighborhood kids just slowly pouring at the glass, wanting to get inside here. We can't let that. It's going to be messy. We're going to grab that knife there and pulp this corpse. Can we still hear shuffling? Right this second we can't. And the child's moved on. Come on, keep moving. We can't go for those stairs, not while it's there. It will see us. And it can probably smell us right now. And that's not great. The sounds of combat in the distance are just that distant. It won't be drawing anything else right now. And so perhaps backing off might help. Let's just watch and wait. See what it does. Okay. It's moved away. This might be our opportunity. Staying low to the ground, we'll make our way close. Oh, God! <laughs> the horror movie timing on this. <laughs> Just as we feel safe, rounding the corner for the stairs leading to our basement, an adult smashes their way through the glass. A child is downed, pushed out the way, and we are left with little choice at this stage. It is in the window, and it will get through. We can try and lead it outside. That might be an option, one that we have to take. And so, with our hands still free, we will start backing up, but not until we get a few more strikes. Reaching out with magic missile, we're going to do what damage we can. Again and again, missile after missile extends from our hand towards this creature. It is now nice and close, but it is also damaged. We start to move back. Casting out again, we'll start to run, making our way for the backyard. We won't use the window for now, but we'll try and get some distance. We are going to be able to see it better outside. And let's see which way it comes. Right now, it's just causing trouble inside. Can I get you to come through the window at us? I think I can. There we go. But it's not the one that we wanted. It's a child. And there isn't much that we can do about that. We can still try and take down the other. And so we'll reach out with our spell. Damaging them as much as we can. As another window is broken. And our home is looking all the more damaged. Backwards for now. And we're going to have to run to be able to keep enough distance here. We could take out our cudgel. But it's going to take a second and it is damaged. Concentrate as we can. The spell failing twice, but finally we are starting to find our mark again. Striking again and again. It is just holding on to life. A few more magic missiles should do the trick. We're distant enough that it's having trouble seeing us now. But the missile leads it to us. Three of them failing in a row. But we are getting closer, I think, to a level. <sighs> Four times in a row. Well, learning through doing. Let's keep on trying. We've got 1600 to go before another level. And so with each casting, we get closer to that point. And we have it dead. A headscarf, a t-shirt, a motorcycle helmet. That would protect us, but it's already quite damaged. Our magic missile's tearing through it. And so, with that hammer in our backpack, we'll try and smash this body as best we can. Then we're left with that child. A child that we might be able to avoid. It's finding its way out towards us. We're going to try and run around it for now. Try as we might. I think we were successful. It's slow to a walk. And try and close up some of this behind us. We'll start to sneak again. Hoping that we're actually going to be able to make it downstairs to some form of safety. Upstairs is a no-go. 
And you know what? I think we can't mess around here. We're hearing noises outside. And glass shattering. We make it downstairs. And this room won't be safe for us either. I think we'll take what we can of our grandfather's desk and start to drag it towards here. You know what? We could try one of these. I don't know if it's strong enough. We grab the bookcase. It feels very heavy. With what strength we can muster, we start to shift it out and down. And then finally, let's try and push it down towards the door. We can't quite do it. Come on. There we go, Luna. The bookcase is in place. We might be able to get another one in place. And that would have us at least a little bit more safe. Let's grab a hold of this desk, move it out the way, and try and grab another one of these. They are incredibly heavy for her, but we'll try. We're hurting ourselves in the process, but it is a necessary process. One more push. There we go. The staircase is sealed for now. We might just be safe down here. We start carefully and quietly moving around, feeling out for the sofa. We're safe. Maybe. Let's catch our breath, first of all. There we go. Feeling refreshed, but still most certainly in pain. Our torso is well bruised. We could try to wrap one of those bandages on there, or rags, but it really isn't going to do all that much at all. Yeah, it'll only stop bleeding. It won't help us now. We aren't in pain. But we still have wounds. We are thirsty. Let's have a look and see what we can do here. Most of our things have thawed out. And that's good for us. We can have milk. We most certainly will. Some of the other things aren't going to last all that long. Let's start with that though. Because it's going to give us a bit of calories. And it's also going to quench us at the same time. There we go. Unfortunately you can see. Things that freeze generally turn mushy afterwards. So we've already got a day on this milk as well, so we'll make the most of it. Getting ourselves satisfied. That's good. Let's see. Somehow, after all of this, we're still happy. Believe it or not. I don't think that's a true happiness. Given everything that's happened this day. Losing our grandfather. Seeing what remained of him. And then having to cremate him. So that he doesn't come back. Like those things out there. Like the kid still roaming around upstairs. We've got to hope that we can sleep here. On this couch. It's not much. It's something though. And, well, we're not really tired yet. We'll close up this door. And let's have a look and see what we can do here. This laptop computer. We can play a game. I think what we'll do for now though is just light up the screen. It does have a battery, and that battery should last a decent while. That might be enough light to read by. We do still have other books here that we can learn something from. Back to the beginner's guide to magic then, I think. Let's open it up. There are two other spells that we haven't learned in there yet. Phase door. This teleports us in a random direction a short distance. It could be a fantastic technique to get away. And magical light. Let's try and see if we can learn magical light first. It does have a difficulty of one. And then I think we'll try and see if we can learn phase door as well. And so we start to study. And we've completed yet another achievement. Wizard's Apprentice. We have learned three spells. I think it's including our rune spell as well there, but we have magical light. We can see that there is a 44% chance to fail, so reading our book a little bit more should help us out. Our next level is only 4,000 away. How much reading that'll take? We'll see. I think for now though, we do want to try and pick up that other spell. And so delving back into this book, let's see what we can do. Phase door. Yeah, let's begin. And as 11pm creeps by on the laptop screen, we have successfully learnt Phase Door. 
our fourth spell. And with a decent chance to fail, we want to be careful. It does have a range of three, so we're not sure how far it would teleport us. And I really don't think we'll be wanting to teleport down here. That could lead to some unexpected results. We did see our grandfather disappear right in front of us here. Any kind of teleportation magic, I think we're probably going to want to do outside first, to be sure. And now with it being 11pm, I feel like sleeping might be possible for us. Let's close the laptop. And lying here on this couch, with a balaclava covering our face, a scarf wrapped tightly around it, rustled up next to our pack. We're going to try and survive our first night here. Underground, in our basement, alone in the town of Menden. Perhaps there are other survivors here, but there's certainly a sinking feeling in Luna's stomach that she is the only one. And there's also a strong chance that, that sinking feeling is attributed to that great big punch she took to the torso from that stone golem earlier. That tower could be safety for Luna, but she's going to have to approach it very carefully and much more prepared than we are now. Come tomorrow, we're going to have to get inventive. Work with what we can down here to arm ourselves as best as possible, to give us a chance to survive, to carry the flame that our grandfather gifted us. Luna, sleep well. And Legionnaires, if you enjoyed today's episode, please consider leaving a comment or a like to let me know if you enjoyed the show. For now, I have been Rykon. You have all been awesome. And until next time, stay tuned.